Hi everyone, it's Elise from Kid and Clouder Coloring Classes and welcome to our Coloring Tip Tuesdays, short videos to answer popular questions you've been asking about your coloring. Now in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you a few more advanced things that you can do with your digital stamps, such as merging multiple images together, removing white backgrounds and creating borders around images so you can cut out your scenes. Now this is part two of our Using Digital Stamps video series. So if you're new to my videos, make sure you check out video one on how to easily use and resize your digital stamps for printing. It's super quick and simple to do. I'll pop a link in the video description below so you can check this out first if you're just joining us. A quick reminder that I'm using Microsoft Word in this tutorial today. However, you can use pages on Apple devices or OpenOffice is a free word processing software if you don't own these programs. The images I'll be using in this tutorial are free for you to practice with and you can download them over at kidandclouder.com slash free stamps. And again, I'll pop that in the description below the video as well. So when you go to that page, it'll take you over to my website here and you can just click each image to download. Now, if this doesn't load properly, don't forget you can just click here where it says if you have troubles viewing, it's going to take you directly to Dropbox. Now, Dropbox is just a storage facility. You don't need a Dropbox account or anything. You just come up to the top right here and click that download button and it's going to download that straight to your computer for you to use. Again, for more information on how to do this, please view video one as I break through how to download, install and use digital stamps very easily for you. Okay, so now that you've got them ready to go, we know how to insert and resize digital stamps already. So I'm just gonna pop in and do those steps first. So I head up to insert at the top of the page, click on pictures, and you can see I've got my pictures here and I've added a couple of wreaths for you to play with in this step as well. I'm going to add my little bunny and I'm gonna add my watercolor background to start with. Now you can see it's popped them on two separate pages at the moment. So what I want to do is change that alignment so I can have them sitting on top of each other. So I'm going to right click, wrap text and pop in front of text. Now you can see the problem I have here is I want my little bunny to sit in top of my um, background here. So I'm just going to change the alignment on the bunny as well so I can move that around on the page. Now I can move each of these images freely, but again, the bunny is sitting behind my watercolor background. So in order to make sure I can get those two images on top of each other, what I want to do is right click either of the images and it's going to bring up this little menu here. And notice I've got this little um, option. I've got bring to front and send to back. So that changes the alignment of the images on the page. So if I click send to back here, it's going to send this background straight behind the other bunny. Now that's all of a sudden in front. Then I can just drag that to wherever I want on the page to merge the two images together. Don't forget we can resize by clicking them and dragging that side corner. You can resize two images together though by holding down the shift key on your keyboard and clicking both. So notice that there I've clicked both and you can see they're both selected by the little bounding box that's around each one. Now when that happens, I can drag the corner and you'll see it's resizing both of these images together. So that works really well if you're merging your images together on the page. So not too tricky to do. Now, a couple of things we want to think about firstly. In the last tutori tutorial, we talked about the fact that we have PNG and JPEG images. Now, the image that I've used here today is a PNG. PNG allows you to have a level of transparency. So you'll notice the background here is transparent, and that's why I can see this watercolor background through the areas that are cut out. A lot of stamp companies will give you both a PNG and a JPEG, so they'll remove that background for you. 
However, some just give you the JPEG and I've got a JPEG here. So see when I go to open this, if I hover over the image, see here how it says item type and that says JPEG file. Whereas if I hover over this one, it says item type PNG. So that's an easy way you can see which is which. And you can even see here as I look at my PNG, the background looks blue rather than the filled in white. So if I click this one, and I just wrap text, bring that in front. This is the JPEG version of the same image. So you'll notice all of this is filled in. So when I try and put this on top, you can't see through the background of the bunny. There are a few different ways that you can remove the background yourself. In Microsoft Word, you can do it. It is a little limiting. I'll show you how we can do this. So if I double click my image, it brings up the picture tools format menu here. This is where you can alter all of your image type. The way that we remove the background is right over on the left here, you'll see remove background. Now the problem why this is not going to work great is on this image, what you'll see at the bottom, notice how this isn't closed. The line just stops. So that means that this is all open in here. So when your lines aren't closed completely, it reads as sort of one object. So it's not, um, it's not going to section off those objects super easily. And I'll show you what I mean now. So if I click remove background, Anywhere that comes up as um, pink right now, that's going to get deleted. So if I click keep changes, see how it's just deleted everything on my page. I can hold down control and Z on my keyboard and that's going to reverse what I've just done. So that's really good, that's your undo button. So if I come back here to remove background, I want to click on mark areas to keep and I can literally start drawing over my image and see how it comes up white in certain parts. These are all the parts that it's going to keep. Notice here though how I got a little bit of that background. I can click on mark areas to remove and I can try and click that. But the problem is, is that this wasn't closed off properly. So it's not really working for me. It's just the way that this image was drawn, unfortunately. So I can't really do that one. So I'm just gonna discard all changes and I'm just gonna show you mark areas to keep. We'll just make it really easy today just so you can see a couple of these basics without getting too complicated. But you do have to play around a little bit when you do this step in Microsoft Web. I'm just gonna leave it like that just so you can see the difference. So I'll come up here, everything that's white I'm keeping, everything that's purple I'm deleting. And I can click on keep changes. So you can see it's cut out a lot of the image. But now as I bring this up, notice that it's transparent. So I'll move him out of the way. So whatever I kept is now the white part and I've gotten rid of all the extras. So you can really experiment with that to start removing some of the backgrounds from your stamps if you do want to merge them, if you weren't given that PNG option by the artist. So I'm just going to remove him there. I'll bring this back up. Now this technique obviously works great if you have sentiments as well. So you could easily add a sentiment straight over the top or you can add extras like your wreath. So if I come back up to insert and I click pictures, so this could be anything. This could be your sentiments, um, your text, whatever you like. You can add an extra item. Notice that it brings it behind and remember we can't move objects until we change the alignment. So I can right click, wrap text and in front of text. Now that's brought it straight over the top of everything and I can resize that to whatever I like. Now I can change if that's in front or behind. So remember we can right click, we can click center back. Now that's gone the whole way back behind everything. So we can't even see that now unless we move everything out of the way. So I'm just gonna remove that. And I'm gonna right click center back, but I'm just going to send backward. Now backward just goes behind the next layer. So that should sit straight behind the bunny, but not behind the watercolor. So see how you can now start to overlap and play with building up scenes. And of course you can make this any size you like as well. You may not be able to click the watercolor in the background without moving this down a little bit so you can select that. So you just have to play around with moving things so you can select it and change all your sizes so you're happy with the look on your page. 
Now, if you don't have a sentiment stamp and you'd like to add your own text, what you can do is you can come up to the top where it says insert and then you can click on text. And I just click simple text box and notice it's just brought up this little thing here. Now I can write anything I like. So um, let's just try hello. Now you can see at the moment, if I deselect that by clicking off it, I've got a white background and I've got a black border around the text here. So what I can do is I can change all of that. Click the object to select it and it will bring up that format menu. Now see at the top here how I've got shape fill. I want to click that and if I scroll down to no fill, it means that I'll have a transparent background. Now we still have this outline, but we can do the same thing. So shape outline and I can click no outline. So now I just have the text on my page. Let's select the text by holding down the mouse and scrolling over it. Then I can come to home and then I can change the text value here. So I can make this any font at all. And I've got a lot of fancy fonts here. I'm gonna go, oh, let me try. I've got one called Lemon Biscuit. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna do Lemon Biscuit and I'm gonna go, let's go size 40. So see how big that's made that now. Now I can move it by just clicking on the border and moving that around. So I don't really need to change the alignment with the text. I can just move it really easily. Now you can resize it by holding down over the side. Notice as soon as I come over those side boxes, it changes from a cursor to the, that little arrow. And that arrow means it's ready to resize. However, it's just resizing that bounding box, not the text within. So that's really important to remember. It's not gonna work the same way as your photos. You're going to want to select that and you can adjust the size back over here in that format menu and then just make it a little bigger like that. You can rotate your text as well by coming up the top. This little circle is your rotate button so you can do whatever you like there. But you can essentially set up the page with your text, your overlapping images and create your scenes ready to go for printing. Remember, if you want to do multiple images on the one page, I always recommend this because you want to get the most out of your paper. What you can do is you can come up the top here to where it says select. Select, and I like to do select objects. With this, you should be able to hold down your mouse button and drag this gray box over everything. Everything that's within that gray box is going to get selected. So now you can see I can move everything together. If I want to copy and paste it to have multiple versions on my one page, all I need to do is press Control C on my keyboard, or I can right click and select copy. Once I've done that, I deselect everything just by clicking off it. I come down to where I want to paste it and I press Control V on the keyboard, or I right click and select paste. So I'm just going to Control V that. And you can see it's boarded up again. So I'll just move it while it's all selected. Move it down the page. And you can see I've easily got two images side by side. If I'm having trouble seeing the whole page, just pop up and press view at the top of the page. And I like to click one page. That allows me to easily see the one page that I'm going to be printing out. And that way I can have a play with setting up multiple images before I press the print button and see how that's going to work. Now, one last thing I want to show you in this video tutorial is sometimes we want to color in a scene around some of our characters. So I'm just going to delete some of these. I'm just selecting it and pressing the delete button on my keyboard and I'm just bringing my bunny back. Now to create a rectangle around the image, I'm just going to zoom in to 100%. I'm going to come up and click insert at the top of the page and see where it has shapes. I click shapes and then I click the little rectangle tool. Now I can hold down my mouse button and I can drag that to whatever size I like. Notice that it's put a nice big rectangle straight over my bunny. Now remember how we changed the text box colors? We're just going to do the same thing. The format menu should be showing above because my rectangle is selected. 
So I come up to shape fill. Now, because I selected transparent before, it's already still there as transparent. So I can literally just click that and it's going to come up transparent. Or you can still click the button and come up to no outline. Or I can just click where it says the text and then I can choose any color. So you can see here, whatever I sort of hover on, it's changing that color of the rectangle. I just usually go for a mid gray. We're just cutting it out. So it doesn't matter how thick it is or how dark it is, but that's creating a rectangle around. Now, right now my rectangle is sitting over my image. So if your image is really big, what you can do is right click your rectangle and send it to back as well. This means that it's now should be behind. Yeah, that's it. So it's sitting behind my image now. So let me just move this back and I'll just show you one more thing. Now, remember how we talked about um, in the last video, how we could resize objects. So you can do the same with your rectangle as well. So I double click the rectangle to bring up that format menu. Or if you're using an older version of Word, you might want to right click the rectangle and then you'll have format or properties. And then you'll come over here and you'll see that size on the right hand side. And that's where you can change the size of your object. Now I'm working in centimeters being in Australia, but remember Microsoft Word will accept centimeters or inches. So you don't need to work anything out. So if you're doing a tutorial and say it says 10 centimeters high, you can just type in 10 space CM and it's going to do that. If you're trying to work on that and it's meant to be seven inches, you can do seven and then you come and do the little symbol for inches there and you press enter and then it rechanges that. So you can change around with the height and width of your object. And that's really all there is to it. So we've gone through how to merge your images, how to add text and how to add a rectangle around if you're doing a scene and you want to cut out a border. So I hope these little extra tips have helped you here today with getting a little bit more out of your digital stamps. Don't forget if technology is new to you, it's absolutely normal that these things may feel a little bit tricky while you're learning them for the first time. The way it gets easier is simply just to practice. So go easy on yourself, forgive yourself if things aren't super easy, and if you are really stuck, ask for help. A little bit more time and assistance can really help this sink in a little bit more for you, and before you know it, if you make that chance to practice, it's going to become second nature. It's always difficult to learn new things the first time around and you, you have to remember how to do it and you have to go over it. But once you've done it two or three times, it's it. It's the same thing over and over. So it's really quite simple to do. I'm always available anytime if you'd like some additional help. Never feel embarrassed to ask. I think the only thing that's ever embarrassing is when someone doesn't know how to do something and so doesn't ask and so they never learn. That's the worst thing. That to me is the only failure you can have. So I'm here anytime to help. Now, if you found this mini video tutorial helpful, and if you have any other questions you'd like to see answered in this format, please pop me a message anytime. You can also find more answers to popular questions over on my website, kiddingclouder.com, and select coloring FAQs in the menu bar. You'll also find free classes on our homepage, and there's free color blend charts for markers and pencils under the blend charts page. Happy coloring, and thanks for watching.